Okay, uh, we're on the EC guide on step four. So we need to remove the cap. We're gonna turn on the EC probe. It should read as zero. Uh, and when we insert this into the vial, it's important that the, the black area on the probe is entirely uh, immersed in, in, the, in the soil water solution. And also that we don't touch the sides. Uh, the black area is what gives the, the current or EC electrical conductivity reading so that we know uh, how many soluble salts are in this solution. Now it can be highly variable if I touch the side, I touch the bottom, it's going to change. So we want to make sure that again we're in the solution. There we go. We're getting a pretty stable reading. About a 0.54. Okay, we're going to go over the infield use of the EC probe, and I can use it both for EC and temp. And we want to go ahead and insert it. Uh, the black part is going to be the the connection or that we need to to be able to measure the EC. We've got marks for our different depths. I'm going to go down to two inches in depth. And for the soil temp, if we want to do that first, we simply hold the button in and we read at 23.7 degrees. Uh, what you would want to do then to compare this, you would go to an area that's got residue cover, an area that's got crop canopy cover, and on a hot day you're going to get major differences in soil temp. When it gets too hot, hot uh, soil microbial processes are interrupted. Our nutrient cycling's interrupted. Uh, the microbes are not happy, just like you and I are not happy when it's too hot. Also, when it gets too cool, uh, they're going to go dormant, and of course, some of the nutrient cycling processes, the different microbial processes, are also going to be interrupted. The other part that we can do is go ahead and do an in infield estimate of EC, and this is in lieu of doing the one to one test with the vial that we showed, showed prior. And you can simply put the probe in. Uh, we saturate the area with a canteen. In this case, I got a milk jug of water. And it's kind of <clears throat> creating saturated soil conditions. And we can compare it. If you remember, we read about uh, 0.55 when I did it with the one to one. And this isn't too bad. We're reading about a 0.45 EC. And so what we could be picking up here, this is an area that's non-saline. We could be picking up nitrates that are in the soil, uh, possibly some other uh, nutrients such as sulfates that are showing up, soluble nutrients that are showing up as a soluble salt. Uh, so this is kind of a quick, easy way to compare it. Uh, sometimes you can take areas where you've applied nitrogen fertilizer and rows, uh, go ahead and see if that banded area tests higher in EC go to areas that had manure, go to areas that had different management and do comparisons very quickly just by saturating the soil, inserting the probe. Uh, and again, I like to usually go about two inches deep uh, uh, to get a good example. You can go as deep as three inches with this probe. You can go as shallow as one inch. After we measure our REC, we'll save uh, the soil mixture for our other tests and then we'll record the values and then do some interpretation values of, the, of what we just uh, read. And in this case, you might do uh, different management areas uh, for EC. We're gonna record it in table four. In this case, we had a cornfield. Uh, soil EC was a 0.5. A soil texture was a salt loam. It's non-saline. If we've done our pH, we'd record that. Uh, the next uh, value is an estimate of nitrates. If it's a non-saline, you can use the formula at the bottom of the table to estimate nitrate levels. And then you simply go back to uh, the tables in the guide and record what microbial processes may be impacted with an EC of a 0.5 in this example, what crops might be impacted by that level of EC, uh, and then any other notes that you might want. And then talk about the, the management interpretations. Uh, 
if there's anything special that you needed to be aware of. And so that's basically testing for EC.